Northwestern Oklahoma is a largely rural area of the state, a culturally self-described region of the Bible Belt in which creationism is popularly perceived as the dominant view of human origins. According to schoolreportcards.org, the Northwest area holds only a 40% proficient rating on the end of instruction biology exam. Compare that to the statewide rating of 50% and the picture becomes apparent. Teachers are often afraid or even personally unwilling to teach evolution in their biology classes, which could account for the 10% difference between the state average and the Northwest regions. Human evolution is a contentious and in many circles taboo topic. For many, the notion that humans came from an ape-like ancestor brings to the mind, I didn't come from a monkey. According to prevailing thought, we are the final result of a planned creation by God, but can evolution fit in this narrative? Is it possible to believe evolution was the tool used by God to create life, or is it evolution by natural means alone that made us the humans we are today? The interviews you are about to witness were collected from various residents of Northwest Oklahoma. Some are university students, some are high school teachers, and some are blue collar workers. Our intent is to show that despite the hostile environment, knowledge of evolution has a tenuous foothold in northwestern Oklahoma. I think everybody should be scientifically literate. Politicians, everybody. It's just a prerequisite to appreciating where you live and your place in the world. Yeah, I would say as a human, as a person, as a normal person yourself, scientific literacy is fantastic. Um, I think the lack of scientific literacy, especially in Oklahoma, leads us to believe things that aren't true. Without question, you can't have medical science without it. You can't Absolutely. have <laughs> you can't have breakthroughs in the technology. They should be a lot of things. Mm, they should be. Absolutely. They should be more. Uh, they should be moral. They should be ethical. Uh, I think it's important for them to be uh, scientifically literate. Yes, I would agree that's important. Mm -hmm. uh, but then again, is science enough for everything? The Nazis were pretty scientifically literate, but they were uh, probably not the people. Well, that's I should true. rephrase that. They're definitely not the people we want running things. Absolutely not. Okay. Politicians are politicians. Scientists are scientists. Not particularly. Yes, they make policies for countries. They need to be literate in science. Yes, I mean they need to be able to tackle the bigger issues you know, once they're once they're in office and uh, they've got advisors and they've got all these special interest groups or you know, just their own ideas as to how things work. They need to have the scientific literacy to make informed decisions. Mm -hmm. um, a scientific theory to me um, with a religious background is someone who um, has come up with an explanation as to how things have come about, um, such as the theory of evolution in itself. Um, is an explanation of how we came to be and it is their studies, their research, their findings um, all supporting that one that one thought of how we came to be. One that follows the basic principles of science in terms of being able to explain explain and to replicate you know, explain mm -hmm. phenomena and to uh, uh, be able to test the hypothesis and then be able to replicate it under similar conditions. Right. Scientific theory is a set of facts supporting a certain hypothesis. I'd say theory is something that is all-encompassing. So it's not just an idea, but it's, it's an all-encompassing um, explanation for how things work in nature. So it wouldn't just be a really good explanation for this mechanism over here. It would be a broader explanation that can account for 
whole bunch of separate ideas and brings them together. So it's more like um, an all-encompassing umbrella uh, rather than a single idea. Evolution is the adaptation of a species um, physically and um, progressively on to extend their species life. Evolution is changing of a species uh, throughout time in order to either adapt to a, an environment. Evolution? Um, just give my textbook definition. It's the genetic change in a population that enables it to adapt to its surroundings. I tend to include the origin of life in evolution as well, not just how living organisms change over time. I think I was ninth grade was when I first wanted to hearing about it. <laughs> so, but like we actually studied this section of evolution in biology, I think the class was. Early high school. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mine was middle school. So seventh yeah. grade. Oh, maybe it was seventh grade. grade. Yeah. We mentioned it. Seventh grade it was probably a, yeah. an introductory of it, and then ninth grade probably went more. Yeah. yeah. I think I learned about evolution first in maybe first grade, with an episode of Bill Nye the Science Guy, and just like bits and pieces on Discovery Channel and things like that, but. I don't think it was until fourth grade that I was actually taught about evolution in school. Like 16, sophomore maybe, in high school. High school? Uh, to what depth did you learn evolution? We didn't get very in-depth into it. Uh, there's macro and macro. We need to define our terms. Uh, I, I, I am not averse to the idea of it. Uh, I do not have a theological problem with it. Okay. <laughs> Put it that way. All right, and, and the notion, if, if we're going to particularly restrict it to the idea that living things change through time, mm -hmm. which is a pretty basic Darwinian yeah. assumption, yeah. correct? Yes, sir. You're the scientist? Yeah. So, yeah, I think that that's a fair point. I know it's not the proper way to form, but I believe in it. Um, I see it. I see it because of um, books and nature, and yeah, I, I accept it as real, so that would be my reason for accepting it as real. Yeah. I accept evolution as real. So, yeah, well, I have I have an issue with the word believe. Yeah. So the the short answer is yes, and I'd say that the long answer is is also yes. But the reason why there there is a long answer is because when it comes to scientific theory, I don't really perceive there being a belief about it. I I, I see it as more accepting what it is that has been presented as as the data and support and the evidence. So I accept. Evolution. I, I accept the, the data that have been presented, and uh, but it's it's not a it's not a belief. A belief implies I don't know things like faith, love, relationships, things like that. For scientific theory, acceptance is if you hear the data, they explain X, Y, and Z. Uh, can you come up with a better explanation for X, Y, and Z that is testable? And at this point. You always want to refer back to um, Darwin's book, obviously, and the animals on uh, the Galapagos Islands, I suppose. Um, uh, you know, I, 
I guess an example of evolution, if, if, if such if people such believe in it, would be um, Cro-Magnon man. You know, as he's come on, are we descendants of ape-like creatures? That would be my, my best example, maybe. Um, just, I just don't know. In short term, I can think of anything that would prove evolution exists. I think some of the most compelling evidence that we've seen, you know, during our lifetimes is the development of antibiotic resistant bacteria, um, the evolution of insecticide resistant insect species. I think those very strongly support the theory of evolution. Yes. How so? Because evolution states that we came from something else. Creation was we were put here by God. I would say no. Okay. To agree. Um, take the most common one uh, of humans coming from apes. We have yet to find a missing link. And that's where faith comes in, or religion. Um, yes, we may share a lot of the same characteristics of, of the, the ape species, but we believe that we, like we already established, have, we're, we're in this state before we did not evolve from them. Um, and so I guess you could say the, the missing link is gone. <laughs> Yes, okay. So, kind of like we said before, that like the adapting and changing, maybe certain animal species evolving. We don't, I don't know all the details of that, mm -hmm. but that could totally work. I mean, but as far as humans evolving from other species, we were created in the image of God. I don't see that there's a conflict between evolution and uh, religion. Uh, religion is faith. Uh, there's there's nothing to say that uh, that God isn't helping evolution along, uh, and at the same time, there's nothing in evolution that says that uh, it it's not that there's not an outside force creating it. So I don't think there's any conflict between them. In addition to the preceding interviews, an anonymous survey was conducted asking Northwestern students their opinions about evolution and scientific literacy. The survey garnered 249 responses, most of which echoed the consensus of the interviewees. When asked if they believed if evolution is true, 63.86% of respondents answered yes. While promising, this shows that more than a third of participants do not accept evolution as true. Contrast that with the 2009 survey showing acceptance rates of 77% in India, 72% in China, and 65% in Mexico. Most of our interviewees did not accept the notion that evolution and religion are in conflict. The survey data, however, painted a different picture. 65% of respondents did believe there was a conflict between the two, coming slightly higher than Pew Research data collected in 2014, showing 59% across the nation feeling the same way. The final two survey questions dealt with the importance of scientific literacy, and the results were overwhelmingly positive. When asked if scientific literacy is important, almost 90% of respondents answered yes. The last question inquired if respondents believed that politicians should be scientifically literate, seeing 79% answering yes with just more than a fifth answering no. This film attempted to shed some light on the current public opinion towards evolution in Northwest Oklahoma. Many would assume that almost all people involved would respond negatively, but that was generally not the case. The results of the survey, along with the interviews conducted, showed a majority acceptance of the theory of evolution in some way. With that being said, there are still several that are opposed to the idea. While most agreed that scientific literacy is an important quality, a considerable portion of the population fails to recognize what is possibly the most important theory in the field of biology. 
We have shown that evolution is not dead in northwest Oklahoma, but where it progresses from its tenuous foothold is yet to be determined.